Welcome. Fabrication of Clean Junction Dab by IC Fabrication Process. My name is Shivara. Uh, this is 2011 BTE 0084 is my roll number. I am from Assam Don Bosco University. Now let us go to the introduction part. Introduction. The advent of the integrated circuit made it possible to place a number of transistors and thus an entire circuit on a single chip. In the beginning, this circuit had only few transistors, but as the technology improved, they became larger. Integrated circuits are manufactured on a silicon wafer. By 1970, it was possible to implement all <coughs> circuitry needed to realize a microprocessor on a single chip. In the 1960s, Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors that could be manufactured on a chip would grow exponentially. His prediction, now known as Moore's law, was remarkably prescient. Moore's ultimate prediction was that transistor count would double every two years. That, ha that has held up remarkably well. Now let's go to the VI characteristics. This is the VI characteristics. Here you can see here you can see the integrated circuit. These are the transistors at the various level. As per the year increases the process of uh, the, the process is also getting increased. Let us go let us go to the next part. Why should it why silicon? The basic semiconductor material used in the device fabrication is silicon. The successful material is due to the following. It is available in a large quantity in the form of silicon dioxide, SiO2. It has a better physical characteristics and it can be operated on a wide range of temperature. That is from minus 700 degrees Celsius to 1500 degrees Celsius. Silicon has a small leakage current in order of nano ampere. That's why silicon is more thermally stable. That is germanium has a high leakage current in order of milliampere. High mobility ratio, 2 is to 6 is to 1. So it has a less switching time. Mobility of a major charge carrier is, high, is very high. It is suitable for a high frequency only. It is possible to form a stable silicon dioxide has a good insulating properties. Now let's go to the structure of the silicon. Silicon as an element exists with three different microstructures, crystalline, polycrystalline, or amorphous. Polycrystalline or simply polysilicon and amorphous silicons are usually deposited as a thin film with typical thickness below 5 micrometer. Crystalline silicon substrates are commercially available as a circular wafer with 100 mm, 4 inches and 150 mm, 6 inches diameter. As you can see, this is the this is the silicon structure. How it is built up. Now there is a fabrication process. There are many fabrication processes going on. So the first one is the silicon wafer cleaning (RCA) process. In this process, uh, processing wafer, it is necessary to maintain the purity and the perfection of the material. Silicon wafer is cleaned by the standard RCA process. It is useful to remove oil grease. <coughs> Organic ionic contamination. Heavy metal heavy metal iron and native oxide from the surface from the surface of the wafer. Oil grease dust is removed by boiling wafer in trichloroethylene TCE, acetone and methanol. Organic ionic Contamination is removed by boiling wafer in H2O, that is water, NH4OH, H2O2, 5 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. Solution. Heavy metal iron is removed by boiling wafer in H2O, HCl, and H2O2. 6 is 2, 1 is 2, 1. Solution. Native oxide is removed by boiling wafer in HF, H2O, 1 is 2, 50. Solution. Silicon wafer should rinse with deionized DI water after each acid step. Now the second process, oxidation. It is the process by which a layer of the silicon dioxide is grown on a silicon substrate. It's known as the oxidation. 
This process is carried out in a furnace in high temperature. In this process, dry weight dioxide oxidation is performed. When silicon vapors are heated in a pure oxidizing gas ambient such as the dry oxygen, it is also known as the dry oxidation. Oxide layers are very uniform but dry oxide grows very slowly, that is oxidation rate is very low. When silicon wafers are heated in an, ambi <coughs> in an ambience of weight of dry oxide grows very slow, that is oxidation rate is very low. When the silicon wafers are heated in an ambience of weight oxidizing gas such as the oxygen bubble through hot BI water carrying steam vapors, is, it is known as the weight oxidation. Growth rate is high but quality of Growth rate is high, but quality of a drone oxide is not very good. It is the porous that is the less dense compared to the dry oxide. Now the third process, that is the photolithography. In IC technology, photolithography is used to transfer patterns made on a mask of a semiconductor wafer. Therefore, to fabricate a device or an IC, the oxide layer needed to be removed from the selective region on a silicon wafer where the diffusion is desired. First, the silicon wafer is coated with a photoresist and exposed in an ultraviolet light. By the, by the application of the photoresist oxide, layer is aged. Photoresist is an organic polymer sensitive to UV light. It is temporarily coated on the wafer, wafer surface to transfer design image on it through exposure in UV light. PR is applied to the oxidized wafer using a spinner. Spinner has a vacuum holding arrangement and a very high acceleration motor, having an adjustable speed 2000 to 4, 6000 RMP. Now the fourth, oxidizing heating. To remove the silicon dioxide from the region exposed through photolithography is called the oxidized oxide heating. After the post bed, the wafer is dipped in the buffer. HF solution HF solution for a particular time determined by the oxide thickness, oxide thickness and the H rate, followed by the thorough rinsing and BI water. It is called the wet heating. Now the next diffusion. As the wafer, as the given wafer is N type, so we need to diffuse P type impurities into the wafer to create the PN junction, and we have we take boron P type impurity for diffusion. Boron activation, pre deposition of boron and oxidi oxidization is going on. During the boron activation, a layer of the B2O3 is performed, is formed on a BN wafer. After the silicon wafer is placed with the BN wafer, and the boron will diffuse into the, <coughs> into the silicon wafer. During this process, borosilicate glass is deposited, so we need to itch the glass. Now the, now the next point is metallization. We know what is metallization is. Metallization is the final step in the wafer processing sequence. Metallization is the process by which the components of the IC are interconnected by the aluminum conductor. This process, this process produces a thin film metal layer that will serve as the required conductor pattern for the interconnection of the various components of the chip. Another use of the metallization is to produce metallized areas called bonding pads around the periphery of the chip to produce the metallized areas for the bonding of the wire leads from the packages to the chip. Now the G point comes here, the photolithography again is required for the device isolation. Many devices can be fabricated in a single wafer. It is done by the same process as stated earlier, photolithography process. Metal etching, aluminum etching is done on the selective portion. It is done by the same process as stated earlier. Aluminium etchen or to auto phosphoric acid. Now what are the advantages? <clears throat> IC have three key advantages over the digital circuits built from the discrete components. The first is the size, then the speed, then the low power consumption. Finally we come to the conclusion. I have explained the entire fabrication process with the practical implementation of the PM junction diode. I have fabricated approximately 12,500 diodes on a single inch circular silicon wafer by uses of earlier stated fabrication step. 
area of one diode is 200 micrometer into 200 micrometer. Cutoff voltage is 0 0.3 volts and the breakdown voltage is minus 18.7 volts. IV characteristics of the PN junction diode are tested by the IV prop method. That's all and I thank you.